In less than eight minutes, I'm going to show you how to properly secure your Linux VPS using the Ubuntu operating system. If you're using a different operating system, it'll work in a similar way. And if you don't have a VPS yet, you can get $100 in free credit by clicking on the top link in the description or the top link of the pinned comment. Now, moving forward, I'm assuming you have a VPS of some kind, whether it's from Linode or another host. And I already spun up a new server right here, which I'm going to try securing from scratch. So this is my first time logging in. And I'm going to log in using the free Bitvice SSH client. A link to that can be found in the description down below. So entering in all the necessary information, I can now go ahead and log into the server for the first time. And the very first thing I want to do is first clear the console with Control L or Command L on a Mac. And now I want to make sure all the packages are updated. So I can say apt update and apt upgrade dash Y. This will run two commands at once and this might take a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. Now that's finally done. Let's go ahead and install a package called fail to ban. We can do this with apt install fail to ban with the number two dash Y. And this package is going to monitor all incoming traffic. And some traffic is going to be just monitoring for security flaws in your VPS to try and exploit those. And so this will monitor those and try and block them. After we have this installed, we can say system CTL enable fail to ban as well as system CTL start fail to ban. This will make it so we don't have to worry about fail to ban at all. It's always going to be enabled. The next step is to enable our firewall. To do this, I can say UFW default deny incoming. And this will automatically deny all incoming traffic. We can also say UFW default allow outgoing, and this will automatically allow all outgoing traffic, which is typically things that we're doing. Now, if you want to allow specific ports or services, you can do that with UFW allow, for example, SSH, which is default port 22. This will make it so we can still log in using SSH. And if you want to allow specific ports, you can add them in here. For example, Minecraft servers have the default port of 25565. So you would run this command here to allow that port to be accessed from the internet. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then I can say UFW enable. And it's going to say this might disrupt existing SSH connections. That's fine because we already allowed the SSH service. So now it says firewall is active and enabled on system startup. If this tutorial is helping you, then consider helping me by leaving a like. And if you want to get more tutorials like this one, then subscribe to the channel. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. Now, the next step is to create a non root user, because right now, as you can see from Bitvice, we're directly logging into the root user, which has access to everything. So we want to create a non root user, which is the first account people log into. And then after they're logged in, that's the only time they can then log into the root user. So we're basically disabling the root login. So let's create a new user by saying add user and then the username. In my case, I'm going to add in Alex. It's going to ask me for a password. I can enter my password here and then retype the same exact password. Then it's going to ask me a bunch of questions. I can go ahead and just press enter in all of those and then type in Y for yes. And now we have a new user. If we look at our terminal right here, we have root. That is the current user I'm on. I can say SU space Alex. And now I'm going to be logged into the Alex user. I can then type in exit, which is going to log me out of the Alex user. And we we're previously on the root user. So that's where we are now. Now the next step is to disable root login. So we can only log in using the Alex user. To do that, I can say nano space forward slash ETC forward slash SSH forward slash SSHD underscore config. Go ahead and run that. And then we should be inside this configuration file where we can use control W to search for a specific phrase. In this case, we want to look for the word root. And here I see permit root login. If it is commented out for you, then go ahead and delete the hash symbol or the pound symbol and then change the yes to a no. So we are not going to permit root login. I can then use control X to close this, type in Y to confirm and then press enter to confirm we're overwriting the same file. Now I can restart the SSH service by saying system CTL restart SSHD. And then I can go ahead and close this window and then I can log out using Bitvice. And now we're still going to try and log in using root. So if I click on login, it's no longer going to let us because we disabled the root login. But now if I go ahead and log in with my Alex user, or of course, whichever you named your user, I can now successfully log in still. As we see right here, I'm now logged into the Alex user. And once you're logged in, you can do SU space root, enter in the root password, and you're now logged into the root user. So the Alex user has no permissions. You can't really do much with the Alex user, but in order to gain access to the root user, which has access to everything, you now have to know how to log into two different accounts, making your server much more secure. Now let's create an SSH key, which is far more secure than a simple password. So going over to Bitvice, I can click on client key manager 
and then I can click on generate new. You can enter in a passphrase, which is basically just a local password, often useful if your computer gets stolen or anything like that. That way you still have some level of security. Go ahead and click on generate. And in my case, I just created profile two. So make sure you're selecting the one that just was created and then click on export. You want to select open SSH format and then click on export. And then you can save this file. In this case, I'm just gonna call this file temp. I now navigated into this file. I'm gonna go ahead and copy everything and close the file. And going back into SSH, I can now navigate into the Alex folder, which I'm currently in. If you run the PWD command, you see your current path. You also see it right here. So I know that I am inside the Alex user, which is where I want the SSH keys to be enabled for. I can now do LS-A, which is going to show all folders and files, even hidden ones. And we do not see a .SSH folder. Let's go ahead and make one by saying mkdir space .SSH. We can now navigate into this folder. And we now want to create a file specifically named authorized underscore keys. So I can say nano space authorized underscore keys. Now within this, we can go ahead and right click to paste in the SSH key that we copied from notepad earlier. And then we can go ahead and close this file. Now I'm going to say systemctl restart sshd and then i'm going to close this and i'm going to log out i can now go to initial method which is currently password and i want to change this to public key i now want to change this to the profile i just created in my case it's profile two and yours that might be profile one just make sure you're using the exact profile that you just created with the client key manager i can go ahead and enter my passphrase and then afterwards i can click on login so we're now able to log in with ssh keys let's now log into our root user because by default we're logged into alex and now I want to disable the ability to log in with passwords. So let's navigate back into our SSH config with nano etc SSH SSHD config. Let's now do a search for password. And right here it says password authentication. I want to say no. So we do not allow password authentication. I can go ahead and close this. I can save this and I can confirm the file and I can now restart SSH. So systemctl restart SSHD. And before we log out, I want to open up a new instance of Bitvice and I want to try and log in with the actual user, but with a password. So now I can click on login and it's no longer allowing me to connect. But again, if I go over to public key and select the correct profile and enter my passphrase, I can now log in without a problem as we see right here. Now, the reason why I did this in a separate Bitvice client is because if something went wrong, we don't want to lock ourselves out of our SSH connection. So now everything is working. Only specific ports are open to the public. We can only connect with a secure SSH key and we cannot connect with our root user. These are some of the most fundamental things when it comes to Linux security and now your VPS is much more secure than it was beforehand.